Have you ever wondered, how do you actually lose fat? Well, almost at some point in your life, you want that, to potentially drop those inches and go all the way down. But is it possible to get rid of fat from one specific part of the body? What about the myths and facts about fat loss? Well, in today's video, we shall discuss all about how our body really burns fat. But before we begin, remember to hit that bell icon and subscribe to our channel. A very warm welcome to our health warriors. In today's video, we're going to uncover one of our favorite topics revolving around body fat and fat loss. So, what does losing fat actually mean? When we say losing fat, we're actually talking about the subcutaneous fat, which refers to the fat below the skin, the fat that covers your rectus abdominis and even your six-pack muscle. In other words, if you get rid of that fat above, your muscles will probably shine. Now, what about the fat that surrounds your organs? This one is called visceral fat. Take a look at your internal organs, such as the abdominal cavity or the thoracic cavity, where you find your lungs and the heart. Notice the fat present there. It is remarkable to see the amount of visceral fat present around the heart as well as the abdomen. Basically, the deep belly fat that increases your waist circumference. Looking at this, as we learn about visceral fat, it is important to mention how it is linked to many health conditions such as high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and cardiovascular disease. Considering how visceral fat plays a major role in several diseases, while we talk about losing fat along with drawing light upon the subcutaneous fat, we will also see how to lose visceral fat. Let's approach this with two perspectives. One things we need to do to lose fat, and two, analyze the adipose tissue when we burn the fat and thin it out. So, let's dive deeper into the fatty tissue, the adipocyte cells, and the triglycerides. Now, let's take an example of exercise. For instance, you want to focus on your quad muscles, the ones on the anterior thigh. While working out, these muscles need some extra energy, which can be pulled from fat stores such as the fat present over the abdomen or maybe the shoulders. When you take a closer look at the fatty tissues, you see that they are made up of adipocytes or the adipose cells which stores fat, and this fat is stored as triglycerides. And guess what? We need to break down these triglycerides first before the fat is pulled out of the cells and circulated throughout the body. Did you know there is a vital enzyme present inside your adipose cells known as the hormone-sensitive lipase that actually needs a nudge to get activated? How is this done? Well, when we exercise, we release adrenaline, or in other words, chemicals like epinephrine, norepinephrine, and cortisol. All three of these help activate the hormone-sensitive lipase and hence the process of lipolysis, which is actually the way to break down fats. Once the fats are broken down, fatty acids are released into the bloodstream. And guess what? Fatty acids don't really like water. Blood is, however, like water, so to transport these fatty acids, you require protein, also known as albumin. In this way, the fatty acids can circulate to the blood and hence to your working quadriceps. These fatty acids could also make it to the femoral artery and branch off to the working quadriceps. After that, the muscle fibers can take it in and funnel it into the mitochondria to make ATP. Remember, this is going to happen aerobically or in the presence of enough oxygen. Fats are metabolized with oxygen, whereas carbs or glucose are metabolized aerobically as well as anaerobically. How fat is used for energy in the body? Now, if you're wondering why don't we use fat for energy all the time and why would we ever use carbs, let's discuss this more because there are some logistics involved when we utilize fat for energy. We basically pull fat from storage, get it to the bloodstream and transport it to the muscle or maybe any other cell that would utilize these fatty acids. So basically, a lot of steps are involved. Fats produce a lot of ATP per molecule but takes a lot of time, about 10 to 20 minutes of exercise to ramp up the fat metabolism. Our muscles can store a lot of fat, and hence, we rely on fat storage for energy. Our muscles, on the other hand, are good at storing glucose in the form of glycogen, but glucose doesn't make as much ATP per molecule. However, within the muscle, it's readily available and faster to metabolize. Now, let's see what happens inside our bodies when we lose fat. As we pull those fatty acids out of the adipose cells, the cells get smaller and smaller, causing the overall tissue to get thinner, contributing to the overall loss of body fat. This definitely makes those wonderful skeletal muscles. Nevertheless, while applying the same principles we learned about the visceral fat, we understand that we can pull the fatty acids from visceral fat. This reduces the overall amount of fat within the body. Did that get you wondering? Can we control where fat is burned based on our exercise choices? 
In other words, if we do crunches, can we get our body to pull fat from above the belly to make our rectus abdominis muscle more prominent? Well, this isn't particularly possible, given no consistent evidence present. This, however, doesn't mean that you can't make a muscle more visible and bigger. The idea, however, is consistent overall fat loss. Eventually, the muscles begin to get more visible as the body fat percentage starts to decrease. This brings us to the idea that what is the best possible exercise to burn fat? Does it actually exist? Is there a true fat burning zone present? Well, yes, there is a zone or level of exercise intensity where you get to burn a higher proportion of fats as compared to carbs. However, proportions are one thing, but we got to look at the overall amount of fat burnt. Now, imagine you are working in that fat burning zone and get to burn more fats than carbs. Let's say during a light exercise session, you get to burn 70% of fats and 30% of carbs. You must be thinking that this is how you want it to be. But what about the next day when the intensity is higher? This time, you would start to shift your utilization from fats to carbs. In other words, as intensity increases, you don't have enough time to mobilize fats. So you shift to carbs. If in the next session, let's suppose you manage to lose 500 calories, where 70% came from carbs and 30% from fats, you would think that you burned less fat. Well, this is not the case, because this time you burned 150 calories in comparison to the previous example, where you burned 70 calories. That were just few numbers to help you understand fat loss better. When you look at different athletes, you see a difference in their muscular development. This is because some sports and trainings would stimulate muscular endurance type adaptations, where muscles won't get very large in contrast to other trainings, where muscles are stimulated to increase in size. Despite this difference, both types of these athletes won't carry a lot of extra fat. Thus, there isn't a single best way to achieve this. There are several ways when it comes to losing fat. Thus, with several exercise options available, you require consistency to lose fat. Love what you do. Data thus suggests that it's not about focusing on how much fat versus carbs you lose, but instead consider the overall caloric expenditure. Now, while talking about losing weight and burning fat, it is not as easy as it appears to be. There are things that we cannot always control, like genetics and age. However, what you can focus is on what you can control, like how many calories you intake and how many you burn. If you burn more than what you consume, you are likely to lose weight. So, that was all about getting to know your body better, especially when it comes to fat loss, something where all our worries lie. If you liked this video, remember to like and share it with your friends and stay tuned for more on muscle development and weight loss. Time to set your health goals straight. Keep smiling.